So yeah, we're going to be wrapping up our series for the academic year with I am an electrical engineer, and we'll be back in September and already have a pretty great lineup coming up, uh, lots of professionals. And um, so I'm going to hand off to no our NOMA Connecticut president, Paolo, to introduce uh, our guest for today. Paolo, take it away. All right. Thank you, Cassie. Um... It is my great pleasure to introduce to the group Rene Martinez. Um, Rene is a fellow uh, Hispanic AEC professional. And you know, this series is really shining a spotlight on not just architects, but on all of the collaborators, all of the, the citizens of the village required to make projects succeed um, in construction nowadays. It's not just one entity or individual. Everybody has a role to play on the team and everybody has expertise uh, to bring to bear to make projects better. And I really love Renee's story because he's sort of done a lot in his career. He's worked as a, a consulting engineer. He's worked for a construction contractor. And even more impressively, he started his own firm um, that is now, uh, I think, one of the, the real kind of up and coming young engineering firms in the state. Um, so Renee, uh, thank you for joining us. Really looking forward to, uh, hearing your story, hearing what excites you about what you do and, uh, take it away, please. Uh, thank you guys. It is, it is a great pleasure for me to be here today. Um, really, uh, really excited to, to be sharing my story and, and thank you again, uh, for everything you do as part of NOMA to all the board members, uh, uh, it's, it's a very important work, uh, particularly for uh, not only architects, but, but also everyone around the AEC ecosystem. So thank you again. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, quick presentation here on, on who I am talking, talking about me today, so, which is <laughs> not something I do often, uh, but I'll try to do a good job at it. Um, so um, I'm... You know, first start with a quick agenda. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, who, who I am um, and then jump into more general topics uh, about electrical engineering, what we do every day, um, what path did I take to become an electrical engineer, um, what, what is that I do personally day to day, and finally uh, conclude with some professional tips and Q&A. So who am I? Uh, my name is Rene Martinez Sid. Uh, I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, um, where I went to a school, college, etc. Um, that's where I became an electrical engineer. I am the father of uh, two beautiful kids, and um, and I live here in Connecticut. Uh, as far as education goes, um, I, I got my bachelor's degree at in Tech University in the Dominican Republic. And then decided to hop islands and go to Puerto Rico, um, to the University of Puerto Rico, where I got my uh, master's degree in, in power systems at, at a great program that uh, UPR has. Um, as far as experience goes, um, shortly after finishing my education, I, I started working as a consulting engineer for a consulting firm here in Connecticut. Um, and, and that experience uh, was for about seven years. Uh, there I, I designed uh, schools, commercial buildings, industrial buildings, energy projects, etc. Um, after that, um, I decided that I want to uh, round up my uh, knowledge and experience a little bit more. So I started working for a construction company um, in, here in Connecticut as well. We did work throughout New England. Um, there I was part of the design team and we supported uh, construction projects in life sciences, power and energy, uh, educational, et cetera. Um, that, that was a great experience because it combined my, not my previous knowledge on engineering and consulting, and also um, coupled it with um, hands-on construction experience, working in the field, hand in hand with, uh, with, with the construction professional. Uh, 
And then uh, lastly, for the last year, uh, as Paul mentioned, I, I, I was unfortunate that I was able to start my own firm um, in partnership with uh, Brian Donovan, a mechanical engineer. So we've been in business for, for a year now and things are going great. We have a great team of um, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing professionals. And, and we've just been fortunate that, um, uh, that we've had that opportunity. So, so it's a mixed experience, both in design, construction, and a little, a little bit of an entrepreneurship uh, thrown in there. Uh, so, um, so that's basically me. Uh, but before we jump more into what I do every day, I, I wanted to give uh, uh, just, just a quick overview about what electrical engineers do in general, because I decided to become an electrical engineer and immediately gravitated towards the construction industry. But electrical engineering is such a diverse field and, and there's so many um, subfields with, within, um, within the profession and, and so many um, specialties that I think is uh, worth uh, sharing some of those for the benefit of those that are trying to, to, to become an electrical engineer. Um, the first one is like we see every day because we, we we drive around our, our 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 cities and towns. We see the substations on the streets. We see the power wires going from the substations to our houses. But that that's power systems engineering, utility engineering, um, and and that's 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 very important work uh, that that utility companies do. If you think about it, we very rarely lose power. Uh, actually, it's 9.9999999 percent uh, reliable. So, in order to make that happen, there's a lot of work required, and a lot of it happens because of electrical engineers. Um, another important field is aerospace and defense. A lot of electrical engineers end up working in the aerospace industry, particularly here in Connecticut, because it's uh, um, because of the manufacturing base that the state has. Um, a good example is my wife. She works for a um, defense company, and she and she's also an electrical engineer. And we went to school together, so we went through the same program. But I I have no clue what she does, and we're both electrical engineers, so it could be that different even without within our same profession. Um, another one is energy, and and I personally do a lot of work in energy. Um, I'm talking about uh, renewable energy, solar photovoltaics, um, battery energy storage, um, engines, turbines, wind energy, etc. It's a very exciting field right now where there's a lot of development happening and, and it's definitely a good, um, a, a good concentration of specialty for a young professional to be part of. Um, Another one that, that I do quite a bit of work on is buildings. Um, before, uh, electrical engineers only did outlets and lights, and, and that was basically it. Maybe power, uh, mechanical equipment. But right now, uh, the role of an electrical engineer within a building is, is evolving a lot. Um, with the advent of the Internet of Things and connected devices, there's more and more technology being poured into buildings where Devices are, are not just passive, but can be monitored, controlled, um, and, and all of that work uh, happens uh, or is done in, in, in big part by electrical engineers. Um, and I'm not even talking about energy efficiency and integrating green uh, technologies within buildings. So specializing in buildings is another exciting field, and there's a lot of applications to it. Another one I'm showing here is industrial controls. Uh, you go to any manufacturing facility or industry, you will see a lot of machines and, and, and each one of them doing specific things, programming, programmed to do certain things, robotics um, and, and, and controls. All of that work is done in, in great part by electrical engineers. Very, very exciting field to be part of as well uh, these days. And, and just to round it up, I mean, this is, these are just a couple examples. There, there's so much that electrical engineers do every day out there. Um, it's a very diverse field. And that's one of, one of the things I love about my career that you can uh, provide power to houses, contribute to um, 
reduction of greenhouse gas emissions contribute to the uh, this the defense and space exploration. So, so you would think that that electrical engineers are, are sort of superheroes. Well, we kind of are save the world every day. Uh, but <laughs> hey, someone has to do it. Right? <laughs> just a joke. It's just a diverse field, um, and I think there's it's exciting for for young professionals to be part. Um, so now switching back a little bit about my journey and experience. Um, I, I started from the childhood because I think a lot of it had to do with that. I was, when I was putting together this slide, I was thinking, why did I become an electrical engineer? I think it was in big part because of the influence of, of my father. My father is, is also an electrical engineer and he would take me anywhere, everywhere. Um, I would go with him to substations. I would go with him to projects, construction sites, as, even as a little kid. And I, I think um, that that helped me understand understand things from a young age, and and have an appreciation for the work that electrical electrical engineers do. Um, so um, so I think that that's probably the biggest influence in in my uh, career choice. Uh, just just having that understanding of, of what electrical engineers do. So I think that's that's why it's important to have sessions like this where you can have access to professionals that, that tell you exactly what we do. Um, and people understand what that, that electrical engineers do more beyond changing light bulbs out there. Um, so so uh, when it came time to uh, go to college, I decided to uh, go to the Technological Institute of Santo Domingo uh, in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. They have a great electrical engineering program. And um, I, I finished that um, and followed by that, I got the opportunity to get a scholarship at the University of Puerto Rico, um, where I attended their uh, power systems um, master's program. And that was, that was a great experience. Uh, they have a lot of uh, great research happening at University of Puerto Rico with uh, renewable energy. Uh, particularly, I specialize in microgrids, which are clusters of uh, power systems that share uh, renewable energy resources and can operate independently in case of a storm, for example. Uh, so a lot of my work at, in, in Puerto Rico at UPR was, was based on that. And, and for those wondering if they should pursue a, a master's program, um, I, I would say it's probably one of the best decisions I made. It, it really solidified my knowledge, my technical knowledge in, in, in my profession. So uh, the timing of it was right, uh, just for finishing college. I, it, it's one of the best decisions I made. So I, I would encourage anyone that is considering doing that to, to go for it. After finishing my master's degree in Puerto Rico, um, I relocated with my now wife to Connecticut. Um, and as I said previously, I first worked in consulting for a local firm and I had the opportunity to work in a lot of schools around Hartford and New Haven, uh, K through 12. Um, had opportunities to uh, delve a little bit into the solar industry and uh, microgrids, et cetera. After that, I, I switched over to construction. Uh, work in a lot of the same projects and I'll show you some examples uh, of what those are in the next slides. Um, so this is just a couple um, just a couple of vignettes here of, of typical projects that I do. These are um, some of the projects that excite me the most because they involve energy. Um, so on the left here you see a, a, a Tesla battery energy storage. So so these um, this system that you see here can support, uh, it, it was installed at a large industrial facility and is able to support the facility in case of a power outage for um, several hours, allowing them to operate independently. Um, this same system could be installed like at a residential neighborhood or another type of facility or like a multifamily building and allow them to operate uh, off the grid for several, several hours. So 
there's a lot of benefits to battery energy storage and I'm glad to be part of um, that that movement in, 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 in shifting the uh, the uses of energy from your traditional fossil fuels to, to a more uh, distributed uh, kind of distribution. And in, on par with solar, go on par with batteries. I'm sorry, go solar. Solar is an intermittent resource. Uh, we've done um, a lot of work on solar arrays, both both roof mounted, ground mounted, uh, etc. Um, but the problem with solar is that it's variability, right? You only have solar during the day. That's where batteries come into play. So it, 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 those are fields that complement each other. To the right, there's an engine. Um, emergency generators, combined heated power, uh, anything that has to do with power generation is work that electrical engineers uh, do work in as well. Um, this slide this is a fuel cell. Um, uh, Connecticut uh, has a big presence of, uh, or a big uh, presence of fuel cell manufacturing in the state. Actually two of the largest fuel cell manufacturers in the world reside here in Connecticut. As a result, there's a lot of fuel cells uh, that have been installed here in the state. And there's good state incentives for, for that installation, uh, for installation of those kind of resources. Um, I am, I've been fortunate that I have done uh, several fuel cell projects here, like the one uh, picture here on screen. And uh, those projects are all operating today, combining not only electrical engineering, but coordination between process, mechanical, science, civil, etc. So those projects really gave me a good perspective of uh, a big site and, and how to manage and coordinate between not only electrical, but different, different trades. Um, finally, there's um, some build, more building related projects here. We have done a lot of work in labs. Um, we've done a lot of work in uh, manufacturing facilities. It's, it's uh, one of our specialties. So um, that's all important work as well. Uh, and to the right, we have work on the institutional side, schools, K through 12, high schools. Um, and also higher education uh, at the local universities, designing uh, buildings, uh, additions to buildings, laboratories, research spaces, et cetera. Um, besides the projects, what, what tools we use? Um, I, I think electrical engineering has, um, you, you, you have the spatial um, component of it where, where you need you have usually large pieces of equipment that need to fit within certain footprints. So we do use all the 3D software like Revit, where we use a lot of AutoCAD, et cetera. And then to the right, you see the other dimension of it where um, you have to do calculations. Electricity is complicated and it, if not controlled, could be dangerous. So there's a lot of calculations and modeling involved. And we use a lot of the different software for that as well, such as SKM and others. So, um, the, the, there's basically two sides of it, um, the physical side and then the electrical protection side. Finally, um, I, I, this is actually the last slide. I um, want to leave some time for Q&A here, but I wanted to, to just to share some professional tips uh, for those of you considering electrical engineering as a career choice. Um, Electrical engineering itself is such a broad field uh, that I think finding a specialty could be challenging. Um, so uh, I was fortunate that I could I, I, I could see construction uh, firsthand and understood it and, and went for it. But um, if, if you don't, I, I think we, we, we all have access to that right now. You just have to go on LinkedIn uh, or reach out to organizations like NOMA. A lot of us uh, just love to talk to young professionals looking to make a career choice. Uh, so please reach out um, if you have any questions and, and we'll try to guide you through the right, to the right path. I also recommend internships and co-ops a lot because they give you a perspective of how different industries do different things. Uh, but, but finally, what are you passionate about? If you're passionate about the environment, I, I think you know uh, the energy sector is, is one for you. If you're passionate about uh, processes and manufacturing, perhaps controls, 
or if you like programming, um, aerospace and defense and controls are as well are, are also good choices. So, so what are you good and what are you passionate about? Those, those are important questions. One I always recommend is learn how to use the tools early on. But that's something I did. Um, I, I while in college and even before I took there was no Revit back then. It was AutoCAD. I, I learned how to use AutoCAD pretty quickly and I was good with programming. And what that allowed me to do was to, to just be a good tool uh, that uh, senior people within the company could use. I, I was, if you become proficient, um, people are gonna wanna work with you because um, you are giving them something helpful in return. And in the process, you learn, uh, you learn how to do things and, and, and how to structure whole projects together. So I think that's valuable uh, that, that, that you find ways of bringing value to the table and the best ways to learn how to use the tools. And, and that goes well with the next point, uh, find a good mentor. And, and you usually find a good mentor through work because uh, you can, when you work with someone, you, you, you know if it's uh, someone that you could learn from and that it's worth following. So um, invest time on that and when, when you're making your first career move. And, and lastly, don't be afraid to experiment. Um, there's many fields in electrical engineering. You can always switch around um, internships, co-ops, jobs, and, and find, find what you like. Um, so those are pretty much the main points. Um, finally, um, just to conclude, I think electrical engineering uh, was a great career choice for me. It's been a very rewarding career. I've been able to be part of uh, great projects that, that have contributed and helped uh, to, to the development of uh, our cities and towns and, and in, in general. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, I'm very fortunate to have been able through my work as an electrical engineer start my own business. And that was one of my, my goals that I've always had. So, so I've been fortunate about that as well. And, and I think a lot of that is because of, uh, of my career choice. So um, now uh, here's my son, Joaquin. My, a lot of my time is uh, put into uh, training the next generation of Martinez electrical engineers. And <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Uh, but he, he, he's learning how to use Excel right now. So we'll start. <laughs> um, other than that, that's it. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, we actually do have a question here. And I think this is, I don't know if he's, he's a little shy, but, um, Normally, this is just our sustainable architecture shop. Sorry about the bell. Um, however, we have a student here from Mechatronics who is very interested in um, possibly pursuing electrical engineering. He likes what we do in, in this shop, also like the electrical component. So I guess, and he's a, he's a junior. So if this is something that he's interested in pursuing, I guess my question is how can I, how can our shop help him? He's learning sort of the electrical components. What would you mm -hmm. recommend for us to sort of engage him with when he gets a chance to come down here? Um, would it be sort of teaching some basic CAD or Revit skills? Or, I mean, I don't know, I guess that's what I'm asking. Like, what do you think would be beneficial for him uh, in regard to getting into the engineering component? Um, yeah, so if, if he's interesting in, in mechatronics, uh, I want to say that um, mechatronics has a lot of programming included. So, and, and and so I think getting him involved into Revit would be great. Revit is a big database, and um, and and that's one of the things I love about Revit that you have a lot of data and you can do a lot of things with it. You can automate it and make your workflow so easy. So I think that's one thing that that he'll get excited about how to use like the, the information system within Revit. Um, also, I would recommend uh, to get him involved perhaps into lighting. Lighting lately, um, it's not just about the light, but it's more about lighting controls. How can you uh, meet efficient, current efficiency standards and particularly what is coming in 
uh, with the new Connecticut building code in October. How can you meet those uh, efficiency standards and controlling lights um, and picking systems that that do what is required, whether it's dimming, um, uh, time patterns, or um, you know, or methods of control. So I think lighting might be a good one too for him to get involved. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Uh All right, any other questions? Um, I think that's, I think we have, yeah. All right, I think we have all our questions for today. Um, right, you guys get it? Okay. All right, thank you so much. Um, this is once again, an incredible lecture series. I'm really uh, excited that we today were able to open it up to maybe kids who weren't necessarily our architecture students, but uh, I do refer to them as my adopted students because they're down here a lot because uh, they tend to like. I usually get the I loved your shop. You guys are so much fun. I can't sit down all day. So uh, when that happens, we, we tend to ask them to come come visit for uh, for things like this. And, you know, I think that is definitely something that is is can, like I don't want to say a stereotype or a bias, but a lot of times they're like, well, I like architecture, but I can't sit at a desk all day and draw. And it's nice to see, you know, that there are other aspects and there are other um, ways to to be into architecture and design and, and use your brain in a different way and, and be up in a different way. So thank you guys. Sarah, could I jump in for a minute? I've got a few questions for Renee that are, you know, both sort of career oriented, but also sort of process oriented that may be oh, useful absolutely. for some of the students to hear. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I think I think we've talked to the students in the past um, about architecture being a licensed profession. So, you know, in, in the state of Connecticut, you have to get a, a certain kind of educational background, um, you know, an accredited degree from a college university that studies architecture. Um, you have to do, you know, a sort of apprenticeship um, where you work in, you know, different kind of aspects of the day-to-day -day life and then take a bunch of licensing exams. And Renee, I was hoping you could kind of tell us about what is the journey to get a similar credential for being an engineer? Absolutely, Paolo, yes. So um, so in my case, I, I had a foreign degree. So that added a little bit, uh, a little bit of an extra step where I had to get it validated um, here for, for an AVID four year program. Uh, so if, if, if this, if the engineer has a four-year AVID uh, program, that will be the, the AVID certified four-year program. That will be the first step that is recognized by NCEES, which is the accrediting agency for professional engineering in, in all 52 states. So the first step uh, uh, is to um, apply for an engineering and training license. And that engineering and training license, my recommendation is to get it while uh, you're still in school, um, it's it, it's a very long exam, and it's about all the concepts that uh, are very fresh while while we're still going through our, our undergraduate degree. Um, I'm talking about chemistry, math, calculus, etc. It's a very comprehensive test with a lot packed in. So my recommendation is to get that out of the way while you're in college or very shortly after. Um, after you get your EIT, then you have to go through an uh, apprenticeship period under the supervision of a professional engineer uh, for a period of four years. After you get um, those four years uh, of uh, apprenticeship, and by the way, if you do a master's degree, that counts towards one year, so one year of that. Um, after you get through those four years, then you can apply to take the professional engineering license or the PE license. And uh, for that license, you have to sit through an exam and you also have to meet certain criteria. Um, some of that is to get recommendations from four uh, professional engineering peers that um, vouch for uh, your uh, professional integrity. So once you get through that, pass the test, then you get awarded a, a PE or professional engineering license. That license um, is valid for the state where you take the exam. However, 
there, there is comedy agreements between most of the states. So transferring or acquiring additional state licenses is a process that usually takes two or three months, um, but is very doable. Thank you. Um, so, you know, it's interesting, it's, it's a journey, you know, just as it is with architecture to get that credential after your name. Um, but in your case, it was clearly worth it because you worked on some really fun stuff. What's, yeah. been the, what's been the most fun project you've worked on out of curiosity as an engineer um, yes. or as a builder? So I will say the most fun project, um, there's, there's, there's been quite a few, um, but um, I worked on a project um, at a manufacturing facility recently where, where it combined a lot of the um, energy uh, resources together into one spot. So we, we had a 2.6 megawatt engine. Um, that's the picture of the Tesla battery you saw there. And there was a controller that um, managed all these energy assets together and also managed the loads of the building. So what that did is in, in case of an outage, this building could operate independently for the, uh, from the grid using its own resources. So, that was an interesting project. Um, another interesting one was during COVID. Uh, we were involved in the design of several manufacturing facilities to, that that manufacturing the, the COVID test materials like the swabs, etc. And those were very fast-paced projects and, and very exciting stuff that allowed gave us an opportunity to contribute when when the pandemic was in, in during its darkest times. So. Um, We've had the opportunity to work on so many science stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a good point to say that, you know, you are, uh, you know, helping save the world, like you mentioned. <laughs> I mean, that stuff is, you know, you wouldn't think about that stuff being all that important, but, um, you know, you got to think about, you know, the engineering aspect as far as manufacturing goes and what avenues it could lead you down. So um, does anybody else have questions? I don't want to monopolize the the time here. Uh, we have one question. It's a little... I don't know, specific, but um, <laughs> uh, randomly. Okay, so my juniors were just learning about um, lighting and electrical plans, right? And and what the different outlet types mean and, and things like dedicated outlets and GFCI and things like that. And Natalie brought up a good point. I have actually never thought about it. I've lived overseas. I've never even thought about it. Um, <clears throat> you know how there are different, <clears throat> excuse me, like in Europe, they have different types of outlets. Like you can't plug in the same way that you'd plug in here. Um, she was wondering if there are, they must have some sort of GFCI counterpart that's also like that, right? Like, can you explain it? But I'm not even doing a good job explaining no, no, it. you are. It's just, I don't know how to word it or phrase it either. <laughs> it's just like how we have like the outlets that are specifically like for water and like for um, near water you have gfci yeah. yeah um are those are are there also outlets that apply but with the different types different of types of prongs yeah okay that's the question <laughs> are there different outlet like are there gfci outlets overseas that also have like almost a different prong than even what that would be like and i'm assuming they wouldn't also be able to work here like you couldn't yeah. you'd have to get an adapter would that adapter work yeah there there are there are different kinds of outlets um between specifically like american and european systems a lot of countries run on grounded systems so you have you do not have a ground and, and hence you do not need a um a, a gfci protection um like we do here on on, on, on the states uh, but if you, I can send it to you, or you can Google that, uh, like NEMA outlet types, there's actually beyond what we see in our, in our walls in our houses, there's probably about like 30 or 40 different outlet types that combine um, either single phase, three phase, ground or not, and, 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 and are used to support all kinds of equipment. And there's equivalent to that uh, with IEC standards in Europe as well. So um, yeah, there, 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 there's, a, there's, a lot, there's a lot of different outlets and, and there's ways even in Europe to achieve that ground fault protection for sure. 
One of our students wants to know what part of the DR you're from. Um, I I'm I was born and raised in Santo Domingo. Ah! In the city. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Natalie has another question. Can you, I don't know, come on up. Okay. Um, I have one more question. So if we were born and raised um, in DR, was it like difficult trying to like learn all the different like terms in like English or like, do you know? Um, yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, so I think going through my master's in Puerto Rico helped me a lot because the technical terms I, I had some pretty good knowledge of um, because you read in the books, all the books are in English. Um, all the papers that we wrote were in English as well as all of our homework. So that did help me a lot. But I will tell you when I got my first job here and I was going through uh, and, and I was, uh, when we had our first team meeting. I probably uh, retained 10% of what people were talking about. They were talking so fast and, and using slang beyond the technical terms I knew that, that it was quite challenging. Uh, I remember I wrote everything down as I heard it and then I tried to make sense out of it later after the meeting. Uh, but then, you know, then you quickly start getting used to. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no matter how many movies you watch or books you read, it, it does, does take a bit to get used to this, to this lane. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think that's it for questions here. Last call for questions. No? Okay. Um, we are all set here. Thank you so, so very much. This was great. Um, and this exposed, I, I know certainly even myself, I actually had no idea uh, what the path was like to, to become licensed or, or really um, have I really ever sat and thought about how much you guys do. So thank you so much for opening like, all of our eyes to that. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for the opportunity. Always, uh, always willing to uh, answer any additional questions via email or phone. Uh, if any of the students have any, um, I think that electrical engineering is, is usually it, 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 it's hard to understand what what we do. Um, so, and, and we need a lot more electrical engineers than what we have. It's that that's another good point here. Um, it's been very hard to recruit electrical engineers. Um, both for design and construction. There's a shortage nationally in all fields that I mentioned. So um, it's, it, it's a very sought after uh, profession from, from an employer standpoint. So I would highly encourage uh, students to pursue it. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Cassie or Juan, do you guys wanna do any wrap up? Yeah, I just want to thank you so much. And I, I, this was actually even for me very eye opening and learning about your journey and um, just your path towards your profession and now your own business and recruiting your son into your own business already at a young age. It's really Working great on. to learn. So. <laughs> really trying to get that pipeline going. I love it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys again starting September. Enjoy your summers and hope your final projects are all going great. Um, and so, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. <laughs> Bye.